What's up guys, Spin Firearms here. Another video like this, um, not showing firearms, just so I can get some content out of you guys because I think this is another good topic to touch on where I don't even need to show firearms because you guys understand the different size calibers. And if I was gonna grab all my firearms with all different calibers, we'd be, you know, in and out. You guys understand it for the most part. There may be a couple rounds in here that aren't common or you haven't heard of, but you know, I'll explain them. So should you carry other rounds than nine millimeter and does it make sense? People always say the technology with 9mm makes every other round obsolete, especially the number one round I hear people talk down on is 40, um, and I think I disagree with it. Now, maybe 75%, 50 to 75% of the time I'm carrying, it's 9mm. Sometimes when I carry two firearms, it's going to be something else and a 9mm, because 9mm is very little recoil, um, you still get good capacity, and like we talked about before, technology has come a long ways. But with that being said, technology has come a long ways with every round. Just because there's new advancements in ammo, that doesn't mean they only do it with 9mm. Um, they do it with 40. I mean, they got the Underwoods out there. You have super light rounds that go super fast, 2,000 feet per second, 1,400 feet per second for 45 ACP, 1,350 for 40. I mean, you have all these awesome rounds out there because of the technology um, that keeps advancing. Now, we'll start with 380. Does three or 22 long rifle. Let's start there. Never carry 22 long rifle, end of discussion, nothing more to be said. It's unreliable in pistol, in pistol format, and on top of that, it's something, yes, it can be dangerous, it can be lethal, we, we all know that, but if you ever shoot 22 long rifle, you know jams are bound to happen, and self-defense encounters, that's when they're really going to happen. Um, when you're under stress, when you're accidentally hitting stuff on your firearm, trust me, you don't want to carry 22 long rifle, it shouldn't even be a discussion. Um, home defense and other things that's different but I would never recommend 22 long rifle for any type of protection it, it's that simple there's such better rounds um, yes the little recoil would allow you to get fast shots off and so on but I'm not trusting it 380 is the next next one up we're gonna skip 25 and 32 and all that 380 is where I start this is where I tell people that round is still decent it's still gonna do what it's got to do and it's a great round for if you have issues with your hands um, arthritis, like I actually have a knuckle that's really bothering me right now. I had my wrist surgery and I carried 380 for months after my wrist surgery just because I wasn't sure what my hands could do and so on. So I definitely recommend that and I have no problem with 380, especially I ordered the Ruger Max 9. I mean, sorry, the Ruger LCP Max that's chambered in 380. As a pocket pistol, that's a great setup. 380, you're going to get good capacity and it does have stopping power. I don't care what anyone says. Um, so definitely great. The benefits are fast shots because there's very little recoil it's easy on your hands and the main thing it's reliable it's a well-tested round reliable and they make great hollow point options out there for every size 380 firearm now next up is an obvious obvious choice um, of something that I like that I go to often that I talk about on here and that's gonna be 40 um, obviously like I said I carry for 50 to 75 percent I'm not 100 percent sure I'm carrying 9 millimeter but I do carry all these other rounds pretty often um, and so 40 my Glock 27, I have a 23 build in progress, but my Glock 27 is my go-to. And with the Civil Liberty defense rounds, well, I think they're 60 grain. They are unbelievable. There's very little recoil. You're still getting capacity and you're getting a lot of stopping power. Um, I've heard a lot of um, stories and a lot of stuff that actually has happened recently, especially have been in the headlines of the news. 40 puts people down. It's it, That's just what it is. Now the number one complaint is it's snappy, especially out of a smaller firearm like a Glock 27, which I can understand because it's snappier compared to 9. But you can still get fast follow-up shots off, still easy to control, you just got to train with that firearm. Like I said though, it definitely is stopping power. I don't care what anyone says, it's going to it's gonna hurt worse than a 9, it's going to do more damage in most cases, especially if you're using the right ammo, um, Underwood, Civil Liberty Defense, this has been proven, they're reliable rounds. I've shot them at the range. I've spent you know, a good amount of money on hollow point testing at the range just to make sure that these run before I put them on the channel. And so that's why I actually love 40. I carry that quite often. Glock 27, love it. Capacity feels just like my Glock 26 because it uses the same frame, just a little snappier. Now, sorry, my cat is just driving me nuts. Um, next up, I would go to 357 SIG. What I would say about that round is it's not as snappy when it comes to muzzle flip as 40, but you get more pushback, which isn't a big deal, but that round is hot, it's fast, and um, it's basically a 40 size casing with a nine uh, millimeter projectile. 
The problem with that is um, finding it. It's not as common. It's more expensive and so on. But it's an unbelievable round. Super underrated. I definitely recommend 357 SIG for people. But it's all about what kind of recoil you want to control, how fast you can get shots off. Like I have videos on here of me mag dumping um, 40. Super fast and accurate. I mean, you know, mag dumping, you know, they're controlled groups, so I'm getting on site every time, but they're fast and, you know, grouping like this, mag dumping fast. So that's still controllable. And like I said, the 40, I just, I love that round. 357 SIG, great round as well. Like I said, it's just harder to find. It's not as plentiful, but I hope it makes a comeback because out of a Glock 33 setup, it's an unbelievable round. Now, from there, we'll go to 45 GEP. And this is one of those rounds that you don't hear people talk about, and that's fine. But it's something I actually enjoy, and I actually realize in the comments, there's a lot of people who hate on my Glock 39 and 45 GP. Sorry, my cat's getting hairy, hair everywhere. But um, it's a shortened 45 ACP. So same size projectile. Come on, kitty. Um, come here. But um, the, what I like about it is there's no recoil. It, the point of it was to be used in smaller firearms that could be concealed. And the recoil is so little, like basically you picture this, a Glock 26 with a little bit heavier slide, shooting 45 GP, you know, it comes with a six round flush mag, seven round and eight round is what I have. And eight plus one of that, you can't beat it. Very little recoil, huge projectile. And like I said, if you get underwood ammo, buffalo bore, you're gonna have a good re reliable self-defense round that does damage with very little recoil. And you know, you're not gonna have over penetration. Um, 45 GP is an underrated round. Like I said, I've, there's a little section under my comments of people that just have a cult following. They love that round. They they get what I'm saying. And a lot of people have never gotten the opportunity to shoot it because you just don't see it on the shelves. You don't see firearms that are chambered in it other than Glock because it was a round created by Glock, CCI, and Spear. So that's 45 GP Glock Auto Pistol. I think it's a great round. And it took me, people are like, oh, you'll never find ammo for it. And so on. It took me all two minutes online. Um, for you know ball ammo or training ammo it was the same exact price as 40 which isn't terrible and then hollow points same price as every other hollow point it was about $30 for a case of 20 you know so I actually really like the Glock 39 and I do carry it problem is holster selection it's very hard to find a holster for the Glock 39 that's gonna be your main issue because they did have to fatten up that slide so it doesn't work in a 26 33 or 27 holster next up is 45 ACP which a lot of people hate on but I think it's a great round and there's a lot of people who still carry it. The thing is, um, you start struggling with capacity, having a more concealable firearm, but if you don't mind carrying that, like a Glock 30 um, SF, that's a great choice. It's a smaller firearm. It handles recoil really well. Probably one of the better, lighter options to carry that still handles recoil really well. And also, you get underwood at ammo. It gets going at 1400 feet per second or 1350, um, 230 grains, huge projectile. Trust me, that has stopping power. Um, it's all about training you do with that round, um, but all these are viable rounds. All these make sense to carry. I'm not one to say, oh, only 9mm because I've shot all these rounds, and I actually see what they do, and on top of that, they, they're easy to handle if you train with them. There's only one that we're going to get to that I, I say it's, it's hard for me to justify carrying, and that would be 10mm. I have a video online of me shooting 9mm, 357 SIG, 40 40 GAP and then 10 millimeter. And you can see the recoil difference going. All the ones before 10 millimeter, you, you don't see the power. Um, I handle the recoil well with the 10 millimeter, but you see the power, the way that casing is ejected. Um, the way, uh, what do you call it? You see my firearm, it snaps more than every other one, even though I can handle the recoil pretty decent. 10 millimeter is just, it's, it's a little much for everyday carry, but I get why people do it. You're gonna have one shot stopping power. So that's people's arguments to me is, you know, I'm not going to need more than two or three shots. If I get shots on target well placed, you're going to need one, you're going to need two. People carry 10 millimeter in the back country and bear country. They carry it in places where they're going to need one, two, three shots to put down a bear. So just imagine a human um, in a self-defense encounter. That's definitely going to be a round that um, can definitely stop people. It's just how much recoil you want to have. Are you going to have the time um, to let off more than one shot by the time that person comes to you? You know. These are all debates, and that's why you got to decide for yourself what you like. But if you train with 10 millimeter all the time and are used to it, then yeah, I, I think it's a great round. Um, just for me personally, I find 40, 357 SIG, 45 GP, and 45 ACP um, better options capacity wise. You can still have them in a small firearm. Um, and on top of that, you know, recoil is so minimal compared to 10 millimeter. But, anyways, thanks for watching.